Thank you very much, man. Welcome to this uh, in conversation with the incredible producer, DJ, artist, superstar out of Africa, representing South Africa. Uh, my name is Adisha Kwelajide, representing for Pi Radio today. This is a special conversation with the one, the only, Maporisa. A round of applause, please. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Listen, my brother, um, I know uh, one description is not fair enough for you. Uh, that's why I said DJ, producer, artist, you know, A&R. But I, I put that question to you. How would you describe what the entity known as Maporisa is? Now, I'd say the way you described it is, yeah, you know, because I do a lot of things, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, first of all, I've wanted to have a conversation with you for quite some time, for yeah. years actually, yeah. about your beginnings. I'm going to take questions from people in the room, but before we get to that, I just wanted to get to know the guy himself. Yeah. Talk to me about your beginnings. Where did you grow up and what was it like yeah. growing up as a young buck in South Africa? Uh, so... I'm originally from Pretoria, uh, a hood uh, called Sushanguvi. So, yeah. So, I, uh, my inspiration, I guess, with music is it's we we come from like a gospel, uh, you know, background where my uncle plays keys, my cousin plays drums, you know. I produce, then my other cousin sing, you know what I'm saying? Wow. So, I'm coming from a background like that, so... I, you know, I saw a keyboard at a younger age, you know, I think I was like nine, seven, eight there, knowing how to connect a PA system, you know. Wow. Yeah, so I feel that's how, you know, and then I started, you know, I got a, a PC, a computer, you know, like remember back in the days when it was like Windows 95, Windows 98, yeah. So I started fixing computers, knowing how to install a computer knowing how to install a like operating system, what's a hard drive, what's a CD ROM, what's a sound card, you know. So I'm coming from that background. And then now with the music, I fell in love with like house music, mm. dance, afro, and you know, then producing, then now I started DJing. So yeah, I think the DJ thing helped a lot, you know, so I started getting gigs. Then my name, you know, in the hood, started making like, you know, my demo there, and then it will be big and just my hood, just my just block. Just running around yeah. the block. <laughs> <laughs> just the block, so yeah. But I was growing the name, I was growing the name, you know what I'm saying, reaching out, going to record labels, putting demos there, and, mm. you know, yeah. Pretoria, you talked about Pretoria. What is Pretoria like from what I hear, yeah. you know, Pretoria is almost like um, there's the holiday side, there's the yeah. tourism side, yeah. but w what is Pretoria like? Yeah, Pretoria for basically it's a capital city, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, it's really, it, it got a lot of things. So I'm coming from the hood side mm -hmm. and then there's a lot of hoods, you know, so even the sound, every hood, it had a different sound, you know what I'm saying? There's a, there's like guys from like, Back then, Bo, Pujo, late Pujo, Mujo, uh, Java, M Java, DJ M Java. DJ M Java is one of the guys, he, he kind of like came with this kind of like dusty, dark, you know, uh, dense vibes, you know, and then I guess we got influence from that and then it started evolving, evolving. Uh, some guys were kind of like fusing it with house music, some, you know what I'm saying? Instead yeah. of evolving, evolving. So, so we too, it's a different, you know, uh, hood where they have the different sound, even the Eastern, Eastern side, you know, so that's how like the music kept on evolving. Yeah. yeah. Um, I grew up in Nigeria. I was born and raised in Nigeria. And one thing that I know for sure is South Africa, especially to Nigeria, yeah. has always been one of the places where we've had some of the most incredible musicians. Yeah, yeah. You know, from your Hugh Masakela's to, you know, Lady Brenda Smith, Fassi. Black, Brenda Farsi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always been something about South Africa that led 
sound in Africa. Yeah. What, why do you think that has always happened? That South Africa always was first to move some know. sort of sound? I really don't know. I really don't know. Mm. <laughs> That's a good question, though. That's a good question, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of times when, you know, there was in the 90s, then there was Kwaito, there was this and that, mm -hmm. and other genres, other countries like Nigeria will borrow different sounds mm -hmm. from what South Africa was doing, even with the dance moves. Initially in the, in the 90s, one thing I knew with South Africans was the leg movement was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now it's switched up now. Yeah. Now I'm getting dance moves from Nigeria and, uh, and mostly also uh, even uh, Angola, they've got crazy, and Mozambique, they've mm. got crazy dance moves. Or also DRC, Congo also, they've got like dance moves. And also like with me, with the music, like I kind of like, you know, engage and try to kind of like share with the music and the culture, you know what I'm saying, in Involved, you know, uh, I like to work with like different artists. So also, I think with that, although also they really helped me a lot to kind of like also understand the music and work, know how to work with people. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they really helped me a lot. So and then also I learn. It's like, oh, this is how you do it. Okay, let me try to fuse it with this, and it worked. Sometimes it doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Fast forward to about ten years ago, Monster Hit comes out of South Africa corner yeah. um and from that hit record yeah. all the nigerian artists <laughs> jumped on the plane <laughs> it's like listen uru, 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 uru. listen there's a producer a group of guys in south africa making some music we don't even understand what and we're going to look for yeah. them talk to me about that era where yeah. everyone was on the plane from Whiskey yeah. to Run Town to David O, they came looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about the beginning. What was that sound then? How yeah. did you guys find that sound? Yeah. And what was it like to start welcoming your brothers and sisters yeah, from yeah. around of Africa to borrow from it? Yeah, uh, how it started that sound is like, See, we from like house music kind of like influence right so house music has got like sub genres where it's afro house mm. or deep house and you know yeah it, it goes the list goes so we kind of like uh the time i was a member of uhuru mm. uh so we kind of liked the afro house where we were getting booked in angola mozambique you know what i'm saying and then you know, uh, and also they're more influ influenced with, uh, they're more like, they're more, you know, uh, produce like Afro. Yep. Yeah. So with that, you know, a wave at that time, it would kind of like made sense. And then we were really kind of like, this is really dope. And because we were doing it in South Africa, a lot of people were not doing it. <clears throat> Sorry. So it became like a kind of like a fusion of, our music and the afro you know what i'm saying so i think also that and then also with the vocalist uh Bilo, the guy who sings on call yeah so he got like an influence of uh salificator mm. and your and them because they sing in that arabic scale yeah you know what i'm saying so that also i feel like you know it kind of connected with africa Facts. you know what i'm saying so because also it's been like kind of like when i started traveling i realized that oh okay we've, we have a similarity the way we understand kind of like you know the drum pattern and yep. you know the melodies and stuff so with that fusing that it kind of like i feel like it, it, opened it, up. it really opened up and since then it's like i never you know kind of like stopped absolutely you know, i started searching and you know trying other stuff, you know, East Africa, you know, West, you know what I'm saying, Western, even in Mozambique, you know, Angola, you know what I'm saying? So fusing all that kind of like created that African sound. You Absolutely. Know yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of your brothers that I mentioned uh, goes by the name, the little known uh, Whiskit. Yeah, Whiskit. Yeah. He's my bro. <laughs> yeah. The relationship kicked off at that time yeah. and it's continued till now yeah. where you're doing you're still making incredible music together yeah what's that relationship like why is it so strong and you know what what is it like 
uh, I think we connected with the music, really a big fan of the music, you know, and then we kind of like, when we crack stuff, we kind of like crack kind of like different stuff. So mm. we kind of like our chemistry is really dope. You know, we understand each other and then like, I'm also patient and then, mm. you know, so it's like, you know, we, we have room for each other, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like dope and then we really vibed a lot, you know, and he kind of like enjoys when I record him, like, you know what I'm saying? You know, because I also, I make sure that, you know, when I'm a producer at that time, I make sure that you express everything, you know what mm. I'm saying? I make you comfortable, make you free, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, their vibe, yeah, this is, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I give a, a studio vibe so that the studio can really flow properly, you know mm. what I'm saying? So I think he kind of like that also, and then you started working together, you know, every time when you pull up in South Africa, you know, and also we put on, I also put in, I put them on like new stuff, I'm a yeah. piano, and actually the crazy stuff about I'm a piano, let me tell you, it's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm a piano, it's, it's, it's like a kind of like an underground movement, right? So we, I had a booking in Pretoria. So he was there in South Africa. So I say, we went together there. So when I finished DJing, the DJ started playing on my piano. Mm. So what happened in, when the DJ started playing on my piano, he started getting goosebumps. Wow, you know what I'm whiskey. Saying? Yeah, you wow. know what I'm saying? He was telling me, what's this sound? You know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever, we need to be on the song. I'm missing this vibe and stuff. So I, the, from there, I started searching kind of like the Mapiano DJs and whatever. I started to learn the sound and whatever. And then So boom. it was new to you yeah, then it too? Yeah, boom, yeah. Wow. So that was the craziest moment because like he put me on actually. And wow. I didn't say that, it was like, actually my uh, whiskey put me on on my piano wow. because it was like it was a sound where it was underground and it was just mostly instrumentals or the guys would just remix and take a popular song and just remix it and stuff so that's where actually I started you know searching on my piano DJs and stuff and then that's where I met Bo Kabza Kabza the small and stuff and then it's like wow. boom the rest, is, yeah. the rest is history yeah it was just one just to listen, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Sometimes it's important to pay attention. You know, it's like, okay. Because for me, it's like when you got goosebumps, it's like, okay, this this music means something. Because, mm. you know, if Whiskey can understand this thing, wow. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So that's really dope, man. That's, then we started vibing, started vibing. Yeah. That's that's yeah. amazing. Now that you're talking about our piano, uh, especially to us here in the United Kingdom, over the last two years, this new sound has yeah. become a staple. Number one, that's where you get the most beautiful girls nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> the dance moves Thank are you. crazy. Yeah. And it is, you know, it, it's welcoming of different cultures. Whether you're African, black, or your European dance moves, whatever. And my piano is a sound that allows everybody to be a part of it. Yeah. How does... Or how have you guys in South Africa seen the rise of Amapiano across the world? What kind of feelings and thoughts do you guys have about how successful this genre has gone? Yeah, man, I feel it's 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 really, bro. It's one of the greatest moments now because we've been like, it's been a worry. Like I've been worrying that mm. yo, when are we gonna you know get to the top? You know mm. what I'm saying? Uh, you know. Uh, so now seeing that happening, it's really, you know what I'm saying, humbling, you know what I'm saying? Because at least, you know, we get to tour more, you get to, you know, get more shows, work, collaborate more, you know what I'm saying? And my country, it's it's been a country where most of the things, they just do it in-house, everything that, that, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, I, I don't know, maybe it's kind of like this. Because they haven't traveled a lot, it's kind of like scary mm. or, you know what I'm saying, it's like now, you know what I'm saying, but now seeing that can, everyone, you know, even that uh, Ama Piano Festival, yeah. you know what I'm saying, seeing that everyone was there and it was crazy and it was like, was supporting, we got like, too much love and stuff, you know, it was really showing that it was really kind of like mind-blowing, like, oh, okay, we're going somewhere. Okay, let's push more. Let's do more videos. Let's do, you know, do, you know, let's just work, work, work until, you know. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Recently, maybe over the last six months, you know, there's been chat on social media that some South African DJs or artists or even fans who feel like entertainers from across Africa, the Nigeria, you know how we mm. are, Nigeria. <laughs> Thank you very much for the sound. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your sound? Yeah. No, yeah. no more. <laughs> yeah, we're, <going laughs> we're moving with the sound. So some yeah. people felt like the Nigerian mm. artists were, were taking over the sound. I'm might not yeah. be giving the right credit, credit back yeah. to the origins of the sound and you know back yeah. to the people and stuff like that what are your thoughts because i know the nigerian artists are also yeah. making a conscious effort now yeah. to ensure that when they are being asked questions about the sound that a mm. david doe is on yeah. you know david doe saying on twitter space that listen i'm a guest in the ama piano house I'm blessed to be featured yeah. on incredible Shout records. Davido, you yeah. guys need to go back to South Africa to go and get... So yeah. they're making a conscious effort to really point people yeah. your way. But how are you guys feeling about the Nigerian, you know? Uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, it's kind of like I had a problem with it. Mm. But like seeing that it's moving fast and then it's making everyone crazy, it's like... It's like I had to, I had to let go. Fine. And it's like I had to let go. It's like there's nothing we can do now. We have, we have created something that is that the world fun. loves. Yeah, that loves. You just need to support now and just be there, show up. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, uh, you know, uh, just make sure that you there. You make sure. You know what I'm saying? You just can chill and relax because it's gonna move. At at the end of the day, you Absolutely. know, when I when I heard that song, Ya Babuluk, Ya Babuluk was coming from Mozambique, it's like, that's what I was like, okay, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it's gone, you know what I'm saying? You just need to support each other, you mm. know what I'm saying? And then, you know, make sure that we're doing it together because we need each other at Facts. the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Facts. Yeah, yeah. Listen, uh, that's the reason why you're in the UK. Shout out to Pi Radio and the entire team, your, you know, co headlining fantastic across you know the UK yeah. London you had a sold out show that's the first black sold out show at the Ministry of Sound in near a decade mm. and that was because of I'm a piano, I'm a piano yeah. you sure. and your colleagues like Uncle Waffles and, mm. and that alone on a night when your brother David O was doing another yeah, so, 20,000 so, 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 sold so, out yeah. that shows you the interest and the support that Ama Piano has. What has been your your feeling about the reception since you came into the UK really and how dope, people man. are reacting it's really to it? It's really dope. It's really dope, man. That show, shout out to everyone who pulled up. Shout out to everyone who's showing love, you know? Because at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's putting food on the table, you know? Facts. What I mean? So... Man, I just want to explore more. I just want to understand also the culture here, you know? I just want me, all of the South Africans just to come and experience and then, you know, to make their name here also. And also, we, you know, also us, you know, collaborating together, making sure that, you know, we help each other, we, you know, share yes. the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you can't, know everything you know, you're gonna learn every day i'm learning every day i'm only i always learn every day so if we could go that direction i feel like we could reach the top you know absolutely yeah. a round of applause for that please yeah. that's fantastic yeah. um now getting closer to where we are today pi radio has set up a session where you've met young music creatives producers yeah. singers artists who have had a chance of a lifetime to listen to not only play music to you, but to listen to you, critique, advice, signpost them. Listen, I was honest with the uh, uh, Pi Radio guys. I said, we need to charge 500 pounds per head for this. Because this is Maporisa from, you know, you know what I mean? This, this is big stuff right here. You're not, nobody's going to get that. You're not just going to walk into a room where you see, a, a, you know, DJ Maporisa. What has that experience been like for you to listen to music by young creatives here in the UK, advise them and, and just support them and what Pi Radio has done today? No, man, uh, I feel great, man. Uh, you know, and also like the the Amapiano movement, you know, 
uh it's like i wanna really I, it, I like i want I, i need it to to have really solid roots mm-hmm. you know it must not die out it must just be strong and strong Thanks. so for me it's really important to share what i have you know what i'm saying and also you know to encourage and you know to you know what i'm saying you know give you know give strength to the guys or yo you can make it you just need work hard you know what i'm saying dedicate you know what i'm saying respect the job you know what i'm saying because also it's really you need to respect everyone you need to respect the game you know you know don't have a big head because there's going to be a point where you are a star and you can't hear anyone you know what i'm saying so you need to control that also have that you know what i'm saying it's important to have that because you know hitting you know hitting the top you know what i'm saying and You, you can lose everything you know mm. so it's important to take care of everything and you know it's like i take the music as like a soccer player there's a mm. time span Fast. you know so it's important how you use it so cuz when now when you're done with that moving forward what are you going to do you know what i'm saying so taking care of everyone it's important cuz you're going to need you're going to need them again. at some point you know so sharing you know you know collaborating and all that is really important so for me also you know sharing my thing you know i know that i'm continuing the legacy you know what i'm saying it's like yeah yeah facts um guys we've come to the part of this conversation where we'll just open the floor uh to a few, few questions from from you guys here uh to my parisa who would like to ask a question who has a question first yeah So they're just going to pass. Yeah, so you can say your name and then you address your question. Yes, um Chuck Flawless once again. Um you know, first of all I'd like to appreciate you coming here and sharing your knowledge with us. I mean, with the little that you've shared, I've seen a major difference. Yes, and that's something that we struggle with as as uh, young producers coming up. We need that uh support to keep pushing. So I just want to know like once you start picking up and propelling forward say for example as a young producer i start getting gigs i start getting um collaborations with big names how do you keep that consistency especially with the people that you work with because like you are saying it's a people based uh, community it's not about just you on your own so how do you just uh, manage to maintain that integrity around the people Uh, that you are working with because sometimes you never know uh who you are dealing with so how do you <coughs> wow that one's a tricky one though uh, to maintain uh, maybe i need to get the question right relationships yeah. so basically he wants to know how you maintain your relationships, relationships. Yeah. with the people you co- you now start doing business with whether creating music with how do you maintain and cultivate those relationships going forward yeah uh maintaining the relationships uh you know you need to be cool with everyone you know you need to have this neutral uh thing where you know the communication is right you know everything everything is right so that even tomorrow you the person you're going to need you know uh like for example me and kabza you know yes. i have a experience kabza doesn't have experience right mm. so to keep the relationship i have to teach him way he doesn't know so that yeah. me and him can have kind of like along you know for yeah. example uh, i come from a era where you get signed you know yeah. you get those small percentage in whatever and whatever whatever you know but you know in that situation i can't carry on with that so now it's like okay kabza uh let's go 50 50 open a label yes let me have my label let's go make a deal with the major mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and i'll show you how to do it sign your artist and then whatever and i'll help you and then at some point if you know how to do it then you know what i'm saying yeah so i have one relationship with kabza mm-hmm. i have a, i'll make i'll create another one you know what i'm saying i have my own artist too that i signed you know yeah. You know what I'm saying like that it's like you just reach out you make sure you reach out you know what I'm saying yeah. and then have a cool you know neutral way out to you know keep the relationship going you know what I'm saying yeah at some point you have to read a person 
You know what I'm saying? Okay, the person is like this. Okay, let me approach him like this because I need something from him. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those kind of things. I hope I answered you. Yes, thank right you. Now. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Thank you very much for that. Uh, any other question to the lady here in front? Um, my question is about um, South African music. Now, obviously, I'm a piano has somehow miraculously put South Africa on the map. What do you think is the difference um, from Ama Piano to Gom and Guaito, and why did it never reach the stage Ama Piano is at right now? Yeah, okay. Okay, with, with Guaito, Guaito and Ama Piano, they have, there's an influence, uh, Ama Piano, there's an influence that is got from Guaito. Ne? Uh, Kum, kum. That's how you say it. Kum. It, 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 it kum. Is, yeah. <laughs> so with kum, it's kind of like it's club music. It's like it's mostly you can enjoy it in the club. So mostly it's like, sure. It's like same pattern, same. It's like sounds. It's dark, and then it's not really kind of like radio friendly most of the time so it's songs that only can you can enjoy them in the club you know because the tempo is high and then it's got the goof, 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 you know what i'm saying so with that you can't really do much with uh with home you know what i'm saying there's you can you can you can add some pop vibes to it and stuff i feel like maybe also if the guys kind of like try to evolve it and try other things maybe it can go somewhere but because they kept on doing the same thing it's it kind of like uh, we can predict it you know what i'm saying and then you know i feel like that's the thing with the ama piano ama piano you can do a lot with it you can even do comb stuff in ama piano so ama piano you can do so so full stuff that you can play in the radio you can do dark stuff you can fuse them together also and make it sweet and the next thing it switches switches up to a dark vibe you know what i'm saying so i feel like with ama piano everyone can jump into it a person who does an afro beat can access it you know what i'm saying a person, you know what i'm saying it's accessible but home it's really limited it's only it's got few dynamics, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Any question? Yep. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Lovely day. Thank you so much. Um, my question to you is: uh, You already just explained how you work with Cabs, and you know you taught him so much. Um, are there any other artists that we should like be looking out for that you're, gonna, that yeah, you're really yeah, like, yes. nurturing? And what else are you doing in the industry, especially like with like because you know my background is in like licensing, publishing. Yeah. What are you doing to help artists? You know, especially the producers That's get their back. The <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I work with a lot of people, so yeah, because like I like I'm a guy who really wants to. Who, like I'm a guy who really kind of like try to you know s protect the music and save it and it might go to the next level because I had an opportunity to travel you know mm. and go to LA and see how they operate you go to a, a building like this and there's like maybe 15 studios and then they're working on one project you know what I'm saying and South Africa you don't get to see that you know what I'm saying so for me seeing that and then introducing it there it makes things easier or you know what I'm saying it's like okay we're doing Young Standards album Young Standards album we need producers so we don't need one producer we need like you know so that the sound can be really dynamic you know you know what I'm saying uh, who, 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 who should I watch out for that you're nurturing uh, it's uh, one person that you need to, to kind of like really look out to uh, look at uh, uh, it's Ndu, a.k.a. TRP. Mm. So, he actually, he's the guy, he's the first guy to use log drum on Ama Piano. Mm. So, he kind of, like, saved all of us. <laughs> 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 he gave you the cheat code. Yeah, he came with the cheat code. <laughs> but he's more underground. He's more, you know, bro, he's, 
you know, you need to understand him. Like, you need to understand what he's doing. Because sometimes you'd hear something, and after six months, you'd be dancing to that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So he he's a trendsetter because he knows that he came with this lock drum thing. He has to come up with something. So when he gets here, now everyone loves it. We jump into it, right? We're going to do it, all of us. So he has to run away to create another, another thing, thing. You know what I'm saying? And create and create. So he's really dope. So I'll put him, you know, in, he's my one of my favorite because he comes with... You know, he's the one who did that 16 inch. I don't know that, kum, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so he create a different, cause there's a lot of styles of ama piano. There's pop ama piano. Mostly me and Gabza, we kind of like commercialized the ama piano. We added voices, like lyrics and stuff. So them, they will just make beats only. Mm. And then they will only bang in the club and then, you'll just hear it from there and you'll never hear it again. You know what I'm saying? So that's why maybe you would, you won't know a lot of his music, mm. you know what I'm saying? But he's crazy. You look out to him, um, Calvin Momo, but I think you know Calvin yeah. Momo, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's more soulful. He's more, you know, uh, the Soya Matrix. Uh, Soya Matrix, mm. yeah. There's a lot. Uh, Musa Keys, probably you know Musa Keys. <laughs> Um, sorry. Mm. Yeah. Melo and Sleazy, you know Melo and Sleazy. Yeah. Uh, the upcoming one, there's this one called Stuxin. Yeah. You, you've heard of yeah, Stuxin? I've, I've heard of Stuxin. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he does like this Bacardi uh, wave. Uh, this fellow Liti who did this 6-6 six, six and Dipaje. Yeah. Uh, there's also my younger brother, Maestro. So him and fellow, they mostly do it together. together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is exactly what, you know, artists from back home should appreciate. Because what you're doing now is putting us, members of the media, yeah. members of the music business, on to new artists yeah, yeah, that yeah. we're all going to leave this room to go and research, introduce yeah. to other people, people yeah. because it came from a legend. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? So that that yeah. is really, really big. One question I wanted to ask you, um, before we started having a conversation, I said I'd interviewed one of my favorite African artists of a generation in uh, Hip Hop and Sula oh, about yeah. 10 years ago, who he sadly passed away a couple of mm -hmm. years ago. And recently, one of my favorite artists who I also had the opportunity to interview in London about four years ago, sadly passed away in Rick, Ricky Rick. Ricky. Talk to me about what the mood is to be losing colleagues of yours um, to such a devastating uh, illness in, in depression and, you know, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on that and what you think we as a people and an industry can do to hold each other. It's really sad, boy. It's really sad. Wow, man. We just, we're in this moment, in these times, man, we just need to hold each other and really take care of each other. And we really need to talk to each other. Yeah, man, it's really sad, man, it's really sad. Just knowing that, you know, your destination is dead, you know. So I, for me, my advice is just say we just need to take care of each other. Let's talk to each other, you know. Let's reach out, you know. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't even understand the, the illness, you know. Yes. I, I can't say much to it, you mm. know. You know, so, yes. Thank yes. you very much for that. Um, I, you know, yeah, I, I, I definitely thought that ultimately was going to be a reaction in terms of the titans that we've yeah. lost in this game. And like you said, the illness that we don't understand. But again, it, it's very important that we talk to each other yeah. and hold each other strong. One last question from you, sir. Hi. Um, what advice can you give us 
uh, when it comes to marketing and my piano? Uh, advice for for you. So you work in marketing? No, I don't work in. It's just in general as a general oh, question. Oh, how to promote? Uh, you know, uh, recently uh, how I s- I started uh, like promoting my music and social medias, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, mostly we do this like because uh, I would I would we do a lot of music, right, in the studio. So now sometimes in the studio would agree that okay this song it's nice it's hot whatever but now not knowing the audience how they're gonna react mm. so now we used uh mixes like uploading mixes and then get the reaction from that you know then moving forward we know okay the song has got a potential let's release this one then it worked sometimes it doesn't work you know now TikTok is booming, you know, it's just changing everyone's lives, bro. Shout out to TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> Anything can happen. You just come up with a dance move, then boom, the song is gone, you know? So also we just need to kind of like understand social media, how it works, you know, because also me, also it took me time to understand it. Some way, you know, I could get it right, some way, you know, <clears throat> I'd feel, sorry. So social media, it's, you know, it's where we need to kind of like get your fan base, you know, create a fan base, you know, and then, yeah. I'm just going to take one more and then we'll wrap up. Okay? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay, just two quick ones, please. <laughs> two quick cool. ones and that's um, it. Honorable member, I just want to start Hold by on. saying you killed it, uh, Minister of Sound. Oh, thanks, I catch thanks. myself washing dishes now and then. Like. <laughs> 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 now you thanks. killed it, you killed sure, it. But, sure, um, sure. Quick question. So what track that you put out there would you say didn't blow up as much as you thought would and what would you change about it if there is such a thing? Mm. Mm. Yeah, there is. Which track? There is some tracks, man. I thought that I would blow up. One that you know about, maybe that was enough. Just why just why? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, I do miss. Let's the thing is, this the, is the, the thing is, I do, I do miss. The thing is, because you don't know it, because you don't know the song I missed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I do miss. I think in Lerato, you know that uh, Scorpion King's album, Kena Le Lerato, oh, yeah, yeah. Lerato, yeah. Because it was like a cover version and then it's, you know, it's an old story old school song and then I did it like I thought it was gonna kind of like boom mm, you touch know emotions yeah, 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 touch emotions yeah What's but that? so what would you change about it uh, I think the arrangement and you know how I applied the log drum and stuff you know there's few stuff that I could cause also with that song it was like it was more house music yeah. kind of was like you know it was not really a piano piano thing uh-huh. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And you, sir? Um, uh, Danko, I just wanted to ask, because you were talking about your relationship with Gabza before, no? Yeah. Yeah, like, we try to model ourselves off Piano Hub in your label because we've seen it work, you understand? Yeah. And I think Black is Brown is sort of doing a similar thing, yeah, finding yeah, yeah. a group of people that produce together and bring MJ and these yeah. other kind of guys. So, us working here, I just wanted to ask what advice would you have for a group of young people like us, for example, me and Chuck with UK, you know, um, in the music industry, and maybe share a secret of how you guys manage to keep things together yeah, and keep the sound pushing because, like, Piano Hub has grown now. You've got a lot of young artists yeah. in there. You're signing. I think you've got Seizway under yours, ne? No, no, I'm just working with him also. I'm just working with him. There's also Nkuli and Scroof. Nkuli and Scroof. That's what I was saying before, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, with that, it's like, you know, with with, with Kabza, because I had to understand the whole thing. So what happened is like, I started going to his gigs. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? Trying to understand the this piano thing, what's going on. So at that time it was really underground. So it was parties and movement underground. So I would sit there and try to understand the sound. How do they react to it? What makes it really banging and stuff? So that's where I started noticing, oh, the lock drum. When the lock drum bangs, everyone just go mm-hmm. crazy and stuff, you know, and stuff. So, so with that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, and there's a, there was a movement already. There was like a movement that was started, you know. So he's got his own fan base that started growing with him, you know. So with here also. It's like, I feel like the movement needs to be strong. You know what I'm saying? You need to be promoters. You need to make parties. You need to, you know, create fan base. You know what I'm saying? Put them on. Because you guys kind of like ahead of songs and stuff. You know, you'll hear a song before, you know, it pops. You know, so you need to be those guys. And like creating that, I feel like it can grow. You know what I'm saying? Me coming here, I know I don't have stress. I'm going to talk to you, talk to you. Hey, what's going on? Okay, this, this, you know what I'm saying? That also, you know, the connect, knowing, uh, you know, the guys that side, you know what I'm saying? The plugs, everything, you know what I'm saying? I feel like with that, things will be easier. But starting a movement, you know what I'm saying? Starting a movement and growing with the movement. You know, because that's how I saw it in South Africa. It was like a small movement. It was like, uh, small parties in the hood mostly. Actually, it was more in the hood. You know, it's just instrumentals. People were just getting, drinking a good vibe, you know what I'm saying? It was like, they were party, 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 party. It's like, oh, okay. Because also the the tempo of Amopia, you know, it's like, kind of like next to Afrobeat. Yes. Next to Afrobeat. Yep. So, so, people who don't really know how to dance can vibe to it. You know what I'm saying? Say, people who like, who like, who like, who like, who like, who like, <laughs> You know, so starting dead, you know. So I'm a piano. It's a, it's a sound that people who like drinking alcohol. You know what I'm saying? It's like because it's got soul. It's got people want to be emotional. You know, you know. So yeah, with that creating a movement. I feel like it will grow. Finally, you talked about the dance. Whose decision was it that all the DJs had to know how to dance too? What's going it on? It had to, no, it had, it had, it was supposed to happen because like, also like, as, like, I'm, like, cause we entertainers. I've, I've seen it. When I start dancing, everyone's starting to move. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, enjoying it. So it's like, then it started becoming a thing because also we drink, you know, we having, it's like, it's not a show that, yeah, I need to come there and finish and go out. Mm. I need to have a good time also. So mm. it's like, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, the vibe goes, goes to the you top. Spread the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, it's fantastic to see uh, the culture explode the way it's done, uh, not only across Africa, most importantly to me, in the United Kingdom and how people who have felt like they haven't been represented in recent times, now feel included in this rise of African music. And that's because of the Amapiano sound. Yeah. That's because of the success of your Pi radios, the Maporisas, the Capsa, the Smalls. Um, so we want to appreciate you for that. Please, a round Thank of applause you. for the incredible Maporisa. Again, I go by the name Adi Shopo Olajide. This has been in conversation with Pi Radio and the legend that is Maporisa over to Manchester and Birmingham. We go! <laughs> <laughs>